please uh, turn to page uh, 68 spelling by margaret atwood margaret atwood is a canadian uh, novelist and a poet who is famous for uh, the works like surfacing the edible uh, woman and so on i hope you can hear me right all right so uh, the poem uh, spelling it's about uh, female creativity as i have already told you uh, most of the poems that we are doing in this um, in, from this text uh, poems from this text uh, the musical instrument uh, spelling you know these are all uh, about uh, female creativity the life and fate of a female writer how the society views a woman writer so in uh, spelling we find a series of images that the poet uses in order to uh, de represent the fate and life of a woman writer shall we read uh, the poem turn to page 68 my daughter plays on the floor with plastic letters red blue and hard yellow learning how to spell spelling how to make spells i wonder how many women denied themselves daughters closed themselves in rooms drew the curtains so they could mainline words a child is not a poem a poem is not a child there is no either or however i return to the story of the woman caught in the war and in labor her ties tied together by the enemy so she could not give birth ancestress the burning witch her mouth covered by leather to strangle words a word after a word after a word is power a word after a word after a word is power at the point where language falls away from the hot bonds at the point where the rock breaks open and darkness flows out of it like blood at the melting point of granite when the bones know they are hollow and the word splits and doubles and speaks the truth and the body itself becomes a mouth this is a metaphor how do you learn to spell blood sky and the sun your own name first your first naming your first name your first word so the poem begins with the image of a daughter of the poet's daughter playing with our uh, blocks you know where you have letters plastic blocks you have seen your younger uh, siblings playing with letters right you know blocks uh, cubes where uh, letters are written on that um, letters are there and you can learn how to spell with those uh, blocks so the poet's daughter her daughter plays he she's playing with these plastic letters red blue and hard yellow learning how to spell so the first image is that of her daughter so we get to know that this poet she has a daughter and my daughter plays on the floor with plastic letters red blue and hard yellow learning how to spell and then she becomes very serious and says spelling how to make spells so you know that is something amazing learning how to spell so that it will create spell on others you know the second there's a pun on the word spell so you have you know you, you you can create charms with the language when you learn to use a language when you learn to uh, spell things spell out things it creates you know it it gives you a power power to create spell on others you know it creates uh you can create you can bring you know there's this you did you understand the second word spell how to make spells when you learn to use language when you express yourself you are actually creating or putting a spell on others or you are you know there is a charm that you can create with the help of language did you get it did you understand the difference yes sir 
all right the spell you know use of a uh, uh, spell the pun in the word spell you are learning to spell at the same time you can create spell on others you know the spelling use of language can create charm on a, you can uh, you, you can create spell on that and then immediately she says she thinks about uh, the female writers the ancestors she thinks you know women are denied of that spell you know of that charm of that charm that they can produce many a women from the history they were denied this opportunity uh, to create something creative i wonder how many women denied themselves daughters closed themselves in rooms drew the curtains so they could mainline words mainline or write words put words together write something to bring out something creatively so i think you remember uh, the poem musical instrument where pan the demigod um, uses the reed and uh, people were uh, trying uh, that the reed will not be like any other reed anymore so likewise here she says you know i wonder many women were denied daughters so that's the patriarchal society the attitude of patriarchal society if you are a writer if you are a woman writer especially you can't you can't have a family life you know you can't be a normal wife a mother a daughter it's not possible you know if you choose to be a writer be a writer but you can't be a uh, mother you can't have children so she th says you know many a women from the history when they chose to write they were denied family life they were denied daughters so i wonder how many women denied themselves daughters so they can sit uh, quietly sit in a closed room in a in seclusion and write something so you know you think about the bronte sisters george eliot many uh, were you know living in seclusion emily dickinson those writers they were living in seclusion they were denied a normal family life they were denied uh, children uh, the society couldn't accept the fact that a woman can be a mother a daughter a wife and at the same time a writer but it is not the case with a, a male writer right a male writer can be a father can have any number of children and can be a writer at the same time but a woman is denied of that and she says she makes a statement a child is not a poem a poem is not a child you know that is the attitude of the society if you want to want a poem write a poem and don't look for a child but if you and she says a child is not a poem and poem is not a child and why are you saying either you can have a child or a poem it's not possible a child is not a poem and poem is not a child there is no either or but however that is what we see in the society the patriarchal society denies uh such uh, i mean such privileges such joys of motherhood uh, are denied to a woman writer and then she moves on to uh, give uh, the give examples from history you know you might have heard about the witch hunt which hunt people but were burnt at stake so uh, this atwood says margaret atwood says you know such instances she quotes su such instances and says that when you hear a witch being hunted down a witch being drowned you know you are actually losing a writer you know those people are creatively um, um creatively best all they were actually people who had that creative genius in them and they were hunted down branding them as a uh, uh, witches branding as uh, anti socials so then she says i return to the story of the woman caught in war and in labor she moves uh, back and gives an image from a concentration camp where uh, many um, experiments live experiments were done on uh, live uh, people uh, on pregnant women to st learn about labor and, and so on and about pregnancy so uh, here you know this uh, woman was about to give birth and the enemy tied their uh, tied the ties together blacks together so she was denied uh, this uh, childbirth you know she couldn't give birth so likewise you know she compares this um, uh, process of writing down uh, bringing forth something creatively to childbirth so like this woman who was caught in war in the camp who was denied uh, this uh, delivery process 
process of delivering uh, her uh, son or a daughter likewise the patriarchal society the enemy or the patriarchal society is uh, trying to strangle the words uh, coming from a woman a woman cannot bring out what is in them uh, the creative genius in them they cannot give voice to their thoughts you know that giving voice to their thoughts it's um, compared to the process of childbirth i return to the story of the woman caught in the war and in labor during the war and she is about to give birth her thighs tied together by the enemy so she could not give birth and then there is another example of an ancestress the burning witch a uh, witch uh, a woman who was burnt at stake branded as a witch her mouth was covered by leather so that so in order in order to strangle words you know so that she will not speak out she will not speak out the truth she will not speak out the injustice that she was uh, undergoing she will not uh, voice out the oppression the violence that she faced so they are denied words their words are strangled like uh, the woman in the war is uh, denied uh, childbirth likewise these women are denied opportunity to speak out a word why why are they not given opportunity to speak out because they know that a word after a word after a word is power when you speak out the language it can create a spell it has the power to change the society it can it, it has the power to change the tradition and the custom it can question the customs and traditions and oppressions that a uh, women face so that is why they are denied this opportunity to speak out a word after a word after a word is power and that's why and when ultimately when you can speak out when that word becomes power what happens at that point where language falls away from hot bones you know uh, from uh, there is some uh, destructive process happening and from that this new thing comes out at that point where the rock breaks open so uh, you know when the language um, you know when, when you speak out the rock will break open you know it it has a power as if to break open the rock and darkness and blood and everything comes forth again another image of childbirth where when the during this process you know blood and everything comes out right likewise at the point where rock breaks open and darkness flows out of it like blood you know at the melting point of granite so these are all strong you know uh granite the melting point of granite is so high right you cannot actually um you know that is not something very simple so likewise when you speak out you know those impossible things happen you know uh, at the melting point of granite when the bones know they are hollow and the word splits and doubles and speaks the truth and body itself becomes truth so we find different images here the image of childbirth then uh, there is this um, uh, hollow bones or the uh, I mean uh, the society the patriarchal society or uh, they they know that you know that is hollow uh, the traditions and everything that uh, you know the women when they speak out they feel that you know what they were uh, the things that they are used to strangle them are actually hollow you know the patriarchal setup you know it's hollow you can break forth it because when the word splits and doubles and speaks out through your body you know the true the mouthpiece because the, your body itself becomes a mouthpiece you know you speak through your body so at the point where language falls away from the hot bones at the point where rock breaks open and darkness uh, flows out of it like blood at the melting point of granite when the bones know they are hollow and word splits and doubles and speaks the truth and the body itself becomes a mouth and then she says this is actually a metaphor metaphor for writing metaphor for female creativity a metaphor that talks about how a woman speaks out and the change that it can bring forth in the society and how it affects the society how do you learn to spell then immediately he uh, she moves on to the first uh, image of her daughter playing and then she says what do you spell first is it the sky what do you see around blood sky the sun no that is not the first thing that you need to spell your own name first 
your own first naming your first name that should be your first word you should reclaim your identity you should assert your identity you shouldn't be writing about something else the sky the nature no no you should be writing about yourself your own identity you have to create a new reality for yourself because you are best out with a reality by the patriarchal society and it is the word that gives power to create a new reality new identity for yourself which is devoid of or which is free from the clutches of patriarchal setup patriarchal ideology so you need to create a new reality new identity for yourself and that is the first thing that you should be speaking out not something else not a third a third person thing but it's about you that you should be speaking aloud did you get the poem my daughter plays on the floor with plastic letters red blue and hard yellow learning how to spell spelling how to make spells i wonder how many women denied themselves daughters closed themselves in rooms drew the curtains and so they could mainline words a child is not a poem a poem is not a child there is no either or however i return to the story of the woman caught in the war and in labor her thighs tied together by the enemy so she could give she could not give birth ancestors the burning witch her mouth covered by leather to strangle words a word after a word after a word is power at the point where language falls away from the hot bones at the point where rock breaks open and darkness flows out of it like blood at the melting point of granite when the bones know they are hollow and the word splits and doubles and speaks the truth and the body itself becomes a mouth this is a metaphor how do you learn to spell blood sky and the sun your own name first your first naming your first name your first word